well, obviously your first flight island appearance it comes with a, a lot of travel some sleep schedule mm -hmm. you know, changes all that how, yeah. how have you felt so far about the experience um it's really good i mean everyone seems to be like stressing out and like about the sleep schedule i was like wait how should i be stressed out that i'm not stressed out <laughs> i'm like i literally haven't taken a nap i'm just sleeping eight hours a night and i'm like going and then everyone's like oh well, you're fighting at this time you gotta wake up i'm like listen i'll wake up if i have to fight I'll, I'll you know i'll be awake we'll figure it out if i'm gonna lose a fight because i didn't get enough you know a couple hours of sleep then i probably wasn't gonna win anyway so yeah if i'm tired sleep if not Good just point. work out <laughs> um your, your last fight a lot was made of course with the name right it was mm -hmm. you know, the, the last name again but putting that aside i mean how important was it for you just to go out there and perform the way you did and get a result the way you did to kind of move forward in your career yeah i always think that after a loss the best way to get over it's another win and um more importantly the type of stuff that i did in that fight with antonina is some of the stuff that some people thought oh you got better at wrestling and jujitsu i'm like no i've always learned known how to do it i just haven't done it in the fight so that was a big fight for me to gain confidence in, in that part of my game and show that I'm more than just a striker right so then you come off of that and then match you up with a former champion somebody that's you know accomplished some great things in the sport what did you think when they when they offered this matchup what was uh, your initial reaction um I was excited I think uh for a while I was like asking for a fight asking for a fight and then it seemed I'm looking down the division and everyone was already matched up and they were matched up for like a couple months so I'm like I'm gonna have to wait for a long time to fight. So I was kind of stressed out about it. And then um, the opportunity for Andrade came up. So I was super excited, like, you know, matchmakers text me. I'm like, yep, right away. You know, I've like never said no to a fight. I've been begging for any fight. I was like, I'll fight a Bantamweight, whatever. I just give me something. So then to get like, you know, a former, former UFC champion, I was like, oh, okay, this is even better. I'll take it. What do you think about physically the style, right? Because I mean, obviously you're going to be a lot taller than she mm -hmm. is, but she's known for kind of her power that, that she's had even when competing in higher weight classes. So, yeah. And kind of breaking her down, what, how, how do you see that? The, you being bigger, but may, maybe she's stronger? I don't know. Yeah, I think that she, you know, at straw weight, she's able to bully girls around, and that's kind of like her advantage when she's able to bully them around and kind of use her size. That's to her advantage. But she really didn't do that too much in bantamweight. And, um, the girls that she lost to were either bigger or taller and rangier strikers. So I'm definitely bigger than her and I'm definitely taller. I think I'm like eight inches taller than her. It's like the same as if I fought John Jones. So <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, okay. We're gonna try to, obviously the game plan is to use my range and keep distance. That's awesome. So last thing for me, I mean, what really is driving you right now? Because I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. You know, such a dominant champion in your division, it's tough. And, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, being the champion is what drives everybody. So what's what's keeping you motivated right now what, like what keeps you you know pushing hard every day you know i just love training it's like you know for me i'm like i think i'll be like that old lady in the gym that's like telling like the the new pros like oh i used to do this back in the day and they'll roll their eyes at me i just you know i you know as soon as i get home i go to the gym and if i can't train i watch practice so for me it's just i don't know what else to do if i'm not training so i think i just love it so much that it's not necessarily a factor of me being motivated it's just kind of what i do does it mean anything i think you've got bumped up to the co-main event now yeah i kind of thought i was the co-main event <laughs> and then when i got here i was like wait i'm not and then they switched it i was like okay yeah that's what that's where i should be so was yeah. it a bummer initially huh was it a bummer initially no i just kept seeing like half the places i was seeing i was co-main event and then half of the place i wasn't so uh yeah they told me today and i was like oh i get an extra half hour to sleep in do you think Jennifer Maya poses any chance against Valentina? No, absolutely not. I don't think she, her striking's not, not dynamic, not very good. She, um, you know, and I could tell in the fight with her that she looks scared. Um, it's, I don't always, I'm not always able to read the fighters, but sometimes I can. And I knew right away that I was like, oh, she's scared to like really get in there and hit. So, um, and I don't think her jujitsu is very, very good either. So, yeah. Outside of. I assume yourself. Do you see any other female in the division like posing a threat? No, no. I think they're they're all kind of like, you know, they're all the same. You know, about the same level. I don't see anyone standing out anywhere specifically. I think some girls might be tough, but I don't think anyone's technical enough. Then, 
And unrelated to the fight, what was the Instagram post you shared, the the square, the orange square, I think it was Peace for Armenia? Oh, what yeah, the red that? square. Um, yeah, there's just like a war, there's a war going on in Armenia and the media is not really covering it right now. So I try to use my platform to, you know, kind of spread the word and let people know that there's like, you know, they're being bombed and a lot of uh, innocent like women and children are being killed. And, you know, 19, 18 and 19 year old boys are going from California or flying back, going to war and dying right now. And it's the media is like not even covering anything about it. And, you know, I post a red square and I get lots of like people commenting on my stuff, telling me like the genocide was like they're just trying to finish the genocide and stuff. So it's pretty intense. And, uh, you know, I try not to get like too political, but if I can use my platform to just spread awareness and have people, if it just is enough for people to kind of, hey, what's going on? Look up, look it up. Maybe it'll help. Were you aware of the a country surrounding Edmund's flag when you walked out last time? What was that about? Yeah, from from what I, I don't understand, from what I heard, like he wasn't allowed to walk out with that flag. I don't I don't know why. I don't really know the details about it. And I think, I mean, if they let them, the UFC lets them walk out, I think the employee might have gotten in trouble, so I don't know why he got in trouble for it. I don't know the details of it, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, you spoke to Brad, I think, yesterday, and you said that you looked forward to starting a family. Mm -hmm. um, and then you thought about making your last fight, the, the, your last fight, the last one of your career. Do you think about like the same for this next fight against uh, Jessica? And what most motivated you to stay? Yeah, I think like what I said about it kind of got like put out of context. I think, you know, I'm very honest with how I feel. I think most fighters are like, oh, I'm in it. Oh, it's, this is, you know, this is all I'm focused on. And it's like, well, it, it's okay to say that you're focused on your life outside after fighting. You know, I think it's a problem if you're not focused on it because that's a majority of your life is not fighting. So I think that me just saying how I feel and say like now I'm at a point in my life where I can see myself having a family and that's kind of a factor I need to put into fighting because, you know, I'm a female, you know, unfortunately my husband can't have the baby for, for me. So I, you know, and for me personally, I don't, once I have children, I don't want to keep fighting. Um, so just being honest and saying, I want to do that you know, I think some people take it as, oh, she's not focused. She's her. She's already out of it. And I think I said that I'm taking it one fight at a time, meaning I'm just focusing on this fight and then we'll see. And then people are like, this is her. She said this is her last fight. I'm like, no, I didn't say it was my last fight. I said that, you know, I'm taking it one fight at a time. I'm not putting I was asked if uh, if I was asked if I'm like if I know how many fights or if I have a time frame, I said, no, I'm not putting a time frame on it. I think that's bad. When a fight comes, if I'm motivated and I'm in it, then I'm then I'm in it. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Cool. Okay, All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.